Well, it's wonderful to be here with all of you. This is incredibly exciting. And uh, I'm going to talk about the operational sex ratio and how this could be an important unrecognized factor in shaping population health patterns. So the operational sex ratio, what is this? It's just the ratio between males and females in a population, sometimes defined by uh, reproductive availability. Um, and this is usually balanced because over time, males and females have equivalent reproductive success, right? Every offspring has one mother and one father, but this is on an evolutionary time scale, and researchers since Darwin have noted that there have been sex, balance, sex imbalanced populations, <coughs> populations where there are more males than females and populations where there are more females than males. <clears throat> and when you have an imbalance in this sex ratio, you have a, basically a combination of classic economics of supply and demand, right? So when you have more demand than there is supply, then you know, those who are supplying can raise the price, right? So you have classic economics of supply and demand mixed with the somewhat divergent reproductive strategies of men and women. And what happens is you know, the scarce sex can increase demands on, on the other sex and or decrease what they're going to provide. Okay, so what we see in female scarce environments, women are more effective at securing commitment and obtaining higher investment from men. And you see this in a number of ways. There's higher male competition for signals of uh, relationship commitment and parental investment. It's more difficult for low socioeconomic stales, status males to get married and there's higher expectations for paternal care, so fathering. And women can marry at younger ages, and promiscuity is discouraged, especially for women. So there's a greater you know, recognition of the value of women in the reproductive process, and uh, thus greater protection and guarding. And when you see a transfer of money in a marriage, it's a bride price paid by the husband's family. Okay, so it's a, a cluster of characteristics, and we see a really interesting <coughs> contrast in conditions of male scarcity in humans. So male mating opportunities are enhanced, and incentives for long-term commitment and investment are diminished. And you see this in a lot of different features, including an increase in female mating competition. So you see shorter skirt lengths and other features, greater female promiscuity, higher rates of teenage pregnancies, Women are less likely to be married, and they marry later, and relationships are less stable. So there's more divorce, more out of wedlock births, single mother households, and lower paternal investment. And when there is a monetary exchange in marriage, it's a dowry that's paid by the bride's family. So, you know, somewhat paradoxically, here's the relationship between the sex ratio and the proportion of men who are married. And when men are young and they're scarce, they don't say, oh great, well now I have my choice of women, I'm gonna get married and settle down and have a family. Men are actually less likely to be married when they're scarce. And this is a strategy that can only pay off for so long, because I think it's probably mediated by you know, phenotypic quality and with senescence, they can no longer uh, you know, be successful with this strategy. So, when they get old enough, they do eventually you know, settle down and actually have higher marital rates than men in uh, the <coughs> other populations. Uh, so I think that life history uh, you know, has uh, really dramatic shifts in each type of scarcity. So scarcity of each sex differentially affects the investments that we see in various aspects of life. So female, and female scarcity seems to increase expectations of uh, parental investment, and male scarcity enhances returns from male mating effort. And this has been studied in you know, the logical domain of romantic relationships, but I think we can extend this to a pretty wide variety of social and health issues. And the general hypothesis is that the scarcity you know, can impact health and uh, other social dynamics. So I'll talk about one study on adolescent violence, and there's a large literature on what's called father absence or non-residential fatherhood, and father absence increases risk
for a wide range of outcomes. So both boys and girls are more likely to get in trouble for what they typically get in trouble for. And male scarcity predicts higher mating effort, which predicts higher risk-taking and violence. So adult male scarcity could lead to higher adolescent violence either directly within the family through the effects of father absence, or I'm proposing through social conditions that are associated with higher mating effort and lower parental investment in general in, in that population. So here's my field site, Genesee County, Michigan. It's actually a, a you know, technologically advanced population and uh, home to uh, General Motors Corporation. And the history of the city has really followed the rise and fall uh, and hopefully recovery of the American auto industry. But uh, you know, during, during the time of our study, uh, it's definitely an area that had uh, really adverse both uh, economic conditions and it was also rated consistently one of the top four cities in America in terms of violent crime rate. So very high violent crime in the city of Flint. Thus, it's a social issue that we want to investigate and address. Uh, so what did we do? We calculated the sex ratio in census tracts from the 2000 census, and then we used crime data from the Flint Police Department from uh, half a decade later and predicted the monthly assault rate for those ages 10 to 24 across residential census tracts. So we geocoded our data and we're <clears throat> going to do an analysis where we compare the effects of the sex ratio and the predominant explanation for all things bad in public health, concentrated disadvantage, formerly known as poverty. So this is setting up a strong test of our hypothesis. Okay, and here you can see that even in a city that has really high violent crime rates overall, there's variation uh, amongst the census tracts, and there's this really great direct linear relationship between the sex ratio and the monthly <coughs> assault rate. So the greater degree, degree to which males are scarce, the adult males are scarce of the population, the adolescent assault rate is higher. And even this census tract, we know, which seems like an outlier, that's actually within the 95% confidence interval in the range of predictions. So, I mean, I was actually stunned when I saw this pattern. Uh, and then we looked, and what I did was I set up a really strong test by deconstructing the so-called concentrated disadvantage construct and entered those as individual predictors in a stepwise regression. And what you see is that only two predictors have a unique contribution to the variance the sex ratio, and the proportion of the population that has a high school education. And you know, this is kind of like the statistical model that a lot of people might be convinced that, OK, so these are important factors because they explain variance. But I think that the picture is actually more complicated. I think that uh, adult male scarcity actually is related to a lot of the aspects of concentrated disadvantage, so in a way, uh, you know, what I found statistically was that concentrated disadvantage partially mediates the impact of adult male scarcity on adolescent assault rates. And all of, both the direct path and the indirect path are statistically significant. Okay, so I'll now jump to a different topic, birth outcomes. And I'm pleased to see that people who have done a lot of work in this area are here in the audience. So I'll be looking forward to your feedback. Uh, so prematurity and low birth weight are the primary causes of infant mortality in developed countries. And mechanisms regulating maternal somatic investment may contribute to these adverse birth outcomes. High infant and child mortality, so uh, you know, you're hearing this theme about ex extrinsic mortality risk. Uh, this shifts investment from current offspring to potential future offspring, and we know that male scarcity predicts reduced paternal investment. So paternal investment predicts offspring survival and success, so thus we're predicting a relationship. So our prediction is that women living in areas with relatively lower levels of paternal investment will have higher rates of pregnancies that are premature and born with low birth. And secondly, that the sex ratio will be important, that male scarcity will predict lower paternal investment and higher rates of prematurity and low birth weight, both directly and also indirectly through our demographic measure of uh, paternal investment. 
Okay, so this is actually across the United States, so across 450 different uh, counties in the year 2000. So we included uh, the, the sex ratio and then a range of socio-demographic socio factors that are known to predict birth outcomes. And we have a, a nice uh, variability in all of our different uh, measures. And here you can see this is the bivariate relationship. And this uh, shows wonderfully that male scarcity predicts prematurity as well as low birth weight here at uh, you know, the bivariate relationship. But you know, I think that the world is, is actually quite complex, and I like to use structural equations modeling and path modeling to model the complexity of these relationships. So I put everything into uh, this path model, and what we see is that one, our first prediction is supported. The proportion of households with children that are headed by single mothers, okay? So this is my demographic indicator of the ambient level of paternal investment. This is a significant predictor of the proportion of births that are premature and low birth weight, even accounting for the other socioeconomic, socio-demographic predictors that are known to be important. And also, our second prediction was supported and that there was a significant relationship where we see both a mediated relationship where male scarcity predicts the proportion of single mothers, thus a mediated relationship, as well as a significant, statistically significant direct relationship, even independent of everything else, between male scarcity and low birth weight. So in these results, we see that paternal investment predicts prematurity and low birth weight, and it completely mediates the influence of these, these traditional SCS indicators and male scarcity predicts paternal investment independently of those and also uniquely predicts low birth weight. So uh, to conclude, I'll say that uh, male scarcity seems to shift life history, increasing mating effort and reducing parental investment. So there's my, there's my shift. And the effects are seen in important uh, public health and social issues like adverse birth outcomes and youth violence. And policies and interventions that consider these effects uh, for example, the importance of fathering might be more effective than existing interventions. And I have a lot more uh, detail on this that I'd love to share with you. So, thank you. Thank you, Daniel. I think we've got time for a question. Thanks, Daniel. Oh, thanks, Daniel. Um, What's, what's driving male scarcity? S Stephen Corbett, my name. Right, right. It, 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 it depends on the populations, but in the United States, there's economic migration. So there's economic migration of males to Silicon Valley and other areas that have uh, sort of male bias professions. Women will migrate from rural areas and smaller cities to larger cities where there's white collar employment. Uh, and other, you know, in other populations, other countries, there's probably different explanations, but you know, we can identify generally what these, what these factors are. Okay, um, so uh, a quick question about the, uh, the male scarcity issue, and, and that is sort of a driver of crime rates. Um, in Flint, of course, a huge fraction, a staggering fraction of males, young males, are incarcerated, and therefore crime rates are driving uh, male scarcity. Um, and how, how do you tease the causality apart? Mm -hmm. There. Yeah, I think, I think it's a feedback loop. You know, I, th I think it's a feedback loop, uh, and I would definitely say that this I mean, it kind of, you know, is counterintuitive from the perspective of, you know, males are violent and they're responsible for everything bad, so therefore if there's less of them, there'd be less violence. So I think it's particularly remarkable that we're actually seeing more violence, you know, when there's fewer males around. But, you know, I, I agree that there's, there's probably a feedback process Although I think in, in this case, the prime mover is the, the sex ratio because we know that there was more male economic migration out of the city of Flint as the number of uh, auto jobs declined uh, from about 80,000 to like 10,000. So women were much more likely to stay in the area and stay with their families and men were much more likely to move out for economic opportunities. 